You were involved in two of the suburbs' most high-profile crimes, Patty Colombo and Joe Glinowitz. Of the two, which had the biggest effect on you personally and professionally, and why? <clears throat> well, I don't know if you can differentiate between them in terms of what had the most impact, because they were different kinds of events. But when you look at uh, in the, the Patty Colombo case, they had a tremendous impact on me personally and professionally because some of what happened with that case and there was so much time involved in that case and so much time spent away from family because everything that we do in this profession centers on both professional pieces and personal pieces. So putting that case together and working the Colombo case and the impact of having witnessed the crime scene of a whole family that had been mutilated, that had been executed, that was just a horrendous, horrendous event. And especially dealing with the murder and mutilation of a 13-year-old boy who had been not only shot but stabbed 87 times. That really takes a toll on you, mm -hmm. and it really has an impact on you. I mean, even to this day, when I look at these crime scene photos, I can still smell that crime scene. I still have that sense of what it was like walking into that environment. And <clears throat> I uh, ended up missing a lot with my family for that year, because mm -hmm. my kids would be in bed by the time I got home and I would leave before they got up to go to school. So um, those things do have an impact on you and those do have uh, uh, impact on what you're doing personally and then on the professional side as well when you're working a case like that. You want to make sure that you're doing it right. You want to make sure that all the pieces fit. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that you get it resolved and that there's an outcome that satisfies um, the community. That case caused all kinds of turmoil in the community. It was caused all kinds of fear in the community. Because back in uh, 1976 when it occurred, there was, they have a triple homicide, and then on top of that, and a triple homicide being an entire family that really rippled throughout the entire Chicagoland area and had a really impact on it. And then the Glenowitz case, you know, fast forwarding, you know, some years to where we are with, uh, you know, and as you'll recall, the whole environment was, mm -hmm. there was a lot of issues with police officers being shot, being confrontational with society. and. This case then uh, became part of that, a police officer being killed in Lake County had a chilling effect, not only on law enforcement, but on the community at large as well. Because in both of these cases, the similarities I would draw is what is the impact and how horrific is that to society? And people think, who could kill an entire family? Who could kill a police officer? And when you look at what the standing of a police officer is and what a police officer represents in society, to have somebody murder a police officer is really, really impactful and it has a chilling effect on the community. So working a case like that and being involved in a case like that and directing uh, some of the operations of that case um, as well take a toll on you because again you want to make sure that if there's someone out in the community that's involved in this that can commit this kind of a crime that we need to make sure we secure that person secure the community and that the community then becomes safe in their um, environments and in their their uh, surroundings so those cases, although they're high profile, they have a tremendous impact on, again, personally, what was the impact of that in terms of what and how you feel about it, what and how you're trying to do to get the case resolved, 
And you have to be, and, and that's the other thing, you have to be very methodical when you're going through investigations like this so that you make sure you get it right um, and that the information that you develop in the, the case that you put together is a valid case, that mm -hmm. it's a legitimate case, and that you have the right people in custody, and that the outcomes that you publish to the community are accurate and they're true. So there's a lot of pressure gets put on people to make sure, it pressure in terms of making sure that you get it right. What do people not understand about being a cop? What's it like? I think people, and I try to emphasize this, I think people don't realize that police officers are no different than other members of society. They have families. Um, they go to the same supermarket. They go to the same church. Their kids go to the same school. And I don't know that people see that human side of what and who a police officer is. And that <clears throat> the police officer and his or her family is a member of the same community that they are. Mm -hmm. and, um, and quite frankly, some of that is on uh, the police officers as well. Um, that they um, have this mentality of what a police officer should be and what a police officer should be doing. And sometimes that's in conflict with what we should be doing and how we should be doing it. And that's, you know, even now um, we use these phrases about the warrior, the police officer is a warrior in the community. And it's becoming very clear that the police officer has got to become the role of the guardian of the community, which is really different. And there's not times where there's going to be instances where you have to be in the warrior role. Mm -hmm. Certainly that is not going to change. But that's not a constant. This new perspective, this new role of uh, being the guardian of the community and how we interact with the community is very, very important, especially where we're at right now in society and the changes that have started to occur and the impact that law enforcement in, uh, uh, is having in the community. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that are not real positive although there has been a shift because there's this recognition of what law enforcement should be doing. And I'll use as an example mental health. When we talk about CIT training, crisis uh, intervention, <clears throat> where a lot of these police-involved shootings where people just weren't trained on how to deal with people with mental mm -hmm. health issues or drug uh, uh, addiction. And the other one that uh, is becoming an issue is homelessness. So if you look at mental health, drug addiction, and homelessness, those three really tied together. And dealing with those folks in society and that first initial responder um, call requires a whole different approach uh, of, and time investment in talking people down, getting control, stabilizing the environment, and then getting them to a treatment versus getting them to jail. So I don't know that society really understands the, um, the human side of being a police officer. And again, I don't know that some of the police officers understand that they have to start to display the human side of being a police officer and what law enforcement is in society today.